Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Friday, TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. Made it through another week. Little cold snap here this week. Uh, right now it's about 15 degrees below freezing. I say that so you don't have to do any conversion from Celsius to Fahrenheit or anything. It's cold. I know a lot of you guys have outdoor garage shops and that I, I feel for you. I, you know, I have no desire to go into the shop when it's so cold, but uh, you know, I do in the basement, it'll warm up, you know, the lights and everything warm you up. That's one thing about LED lights. They don't warm you up as much as some of the other lights used to. Um, first off today, we're going to be doing Jax 2.0. Looking forward to that. A lot of you guys like that uh, last one we did. We uh, had a little bit, but today we're going to be talking something a little bit different. Some more antique jacks. We're going to be talking about jack maintenance. We're going to be talking about uh, using the jacks and also jack stands. And I will introduce you to one of the coolest jacks that I just picked up. You're going to love it. So stay tuned. Let's get started right now. Now, the first thing I'd like to talk about is jack stands. You know, in a perfect world, you would jack up the car and you'd have four jack stands under the frame or the unibody. And it would give perfect vertical pressure to all the jack stands. Now, when I was a young man, this is the way we'd do, we would do it. I had homemade ramps and homemade jack stands. And uh, there were big blocks of wood, and that's how I would use jack stands for my car. Years later, probably because of peer pressure, and I didn't want to look like some gomer working on a vehicle, I bought some jack stands, and I thought it would make me look more professional. And But I have to tell you, I never felt safe on them. I never liked the design. I never liked the looseness of them. I especially didn't like this fact that they were um, measured in pairs. In other words, you see here, this says two ton, but that's two ton uh, capacity for a pair. And I always thought that was kind of strange. Why would you put two ton on this when it's only good for one ton? There was a whole bunch of things I just didn't like about them. I didn't like the fact that, you know, even though they were convenient because all you had to do was this and and put that down and you were set i just didn't like the way they felt and and rightly so years later i found out why but uh let me show you uh why these i don't trust now more often than not when we're using jack stands we're only using two we're using either we're jacking up the front the back or the side of a vehicle let's say if you wanted to rotate the side tires now uh when you jack up one side or the front or the rear you have a tilt which means the forces aren't directly vertical, they are also lateral forces, and that's where these jacks are not very strong. Now, one thing I was never crazy about is the inherent slop of these jacks in order so that they can work, go up and down, also doesn't do much for the lateral stability of these jack stands. Uh, another thing you could say, well, you can get the jack stands with the pin, they're much tighter, they have a tube with a pin. The problem is that pin, the shear factor, is the only strength that you have for the jack stand. No matter how strong the body of the jack is, you're only as strong as the shear factor of that pin. So in lieu of jack stands, I prefer cribbing or my homemade jack stands. And let me show you what that is. Now cribbing traditionally is where you take blocks of wood. This has been around some shipbuilding back in the 1500s. I mean, what they do is they take blocks of wood, a timber, and you would stack it across and, and uh, you would have a little overhang on the sides. Now, guys are making cribbing jack stands by taking two by fours and screwing and nailing them together and making these kind of semi-permanent uh, structures. And But they take up a little extra room, but they're very strong and very inexpensive to build. Now, this one here is made of scrap plywood, which is traditionally... You know, not super strong as far as, you know, bend-wise, but uh, I am going to put this under the dake, this little model, and we'll see how much uh, weight this little model cribbing could hold. Okay, everybody's favorite. Everybody's ears perks up when we say the dake, okay? So here's the setup, okay? We're just going to take, we have that little model cribbing, okay? And again, it's plywood. It's not even solid wood, or usually they use southern pine or something like that. They can use ash. You can use all kinds of wood. Hardwoods actually aren't as good as uh, softwoods like that, because they, apparently, when these start to give, they'll moan and creak, giving you notice, and that's why they're so great. So we're going to take a steel plate, put it over the cribbing like this here, 
Okay, and then we're gonna increase the pressure and I'll show you what she can take. Now, just out of curiosity, I want to remember a ton is 2,000 pounds. How many pounds do you think that this will take? Okay, just this little model crib. Now, here we go. We're just about to engage. I put two steel plates there to make up the space. Okay, here we go. We have engagement. Now we're adding some pressure. Okay. A little bit more, a little bit more. How are we doing? How many pounds you think we're uh, we're gonna take? I don't hear any creaking. Okay, let's take a look at what we got here. That's two tons, two tons. Let's go a little bit more. Again, this is a model. I'm I'm hearing creaking. You hear that? That's some creaking. At two and a half tons, we're starting to hear some creaking. And uh, how cool is that? So if we can get two and a half tons out of, uh, out of a little model plywood uh, cribbing, can you imagine what if you use the two by twos or two by fours or four by fours? Can you imagine what kind of strength you would get? You would get thousands of pounds, enough to support your whole vehicle. So I like that idea much better than those jack stands that I never trusted. Dean Collins in the house. Okay, let's talk real quick about jack maintenance. All jacks do require periodic maintenance, especially if they're sitting in a garage or something like that. If you, especially if they have any kind of screw thread or things like that. Even hydraulic jacks, you should wipe down the pistons occasionally, make sure there's no dirt, grime. We're going to do just, I'm going to show you real quick how this jack will clean up and what it should look like and how it should operate. It's a little bit stiff here, a little, but it works. And, uh, you know, a typical old jack, probably from uh, the 30s or something. Let's uh, clean it up and see what it looks like. Now there's a screw here that holds this part onto here, you know, this gear. So I took that off. We'll be able to work on that. But I'm not doing a restoration. Like I said, I'm doing a cleanup maintenance. But one thing I noticed when I pulled it up, can you see that? Can you pick that up? Uh, there's a, a bow. There's a little bit of a bend there. Can you see that? Guess where we got to go? Back to the dake. That needs to be straightened out. Okay, now we what we did is uh, we came over here. We tried to get the bow to the top. We're using wood because wood is always forgiving, especially on the threads. You don't want to damage those threads. So let's see. We're going to hold this so it don't shoot out and across the shop. Let's see if we can get this to bend a little bit. You're going to hear some creaking because it is on some wood. Okay. We're, um, we're at two tons now. We are getting some bend. Now let me raise it up and see what we got here. Okay, we were able to do that. Now check out the wood, how it, how it, it, it that would have been damaged if you used metal, that would have damaged the threads. Okay, we seem like we just got a little bit more to go here. Again, I'm holding it so don't shoot across the shop. up to two tons all right you see there's quite a bit of bowing there right watch what happens when we release see how that springs back and let's check out the wood again see that now that that looks uh we got just a little another quarter bend there and we're good to okay, go okay looks like the last one here Okay, we don't want to go too far to pass it. I think that's looking pretty good now. Okay, that looks very good. Uh, lastly, we got this little lip here. You see this bent over front. I didn't do it, it's been that way. So I'm just gonna try and bend this back using my lucky hammer and some draw strikes. And what draw strikes are is when you pull the hammer as you're, as you're hammering. 
you're going to hammer and pull this way. So it should be like a glancing blow. See that? See what we did there? Flattened that up nice without having to go to the belt sand or anything. We just moved that metal back. Okay, we're calling this project done. Again, this was just a, a cleanup. And let me tell you, it was very interesting because we ran into a few things. Obviously, the shaft was bent. We straightened that out. The gears weren't not meshing right. See, now they're meshing correctly. But what had happened was, I guess, through wear and tear, this wore out the top of that. So I put a, uh, what's called a machine bushing. And you buy these at Track the Supply. They come in assortment, and it just so happens this one fit perfect. I didn't have to turn it down or nothing. Use the machine bushing. Now, it, uh, it listen to this. Listen to how nice this is now. It sounds like a ratchet, doesn't it? I lubricated everything with the... Uh, I like to use the 50-50 automatic transmission fluid and red grease mixture. Um, um, the reason I don't put grease on here is because grease is great for high pressure applications. If I was using it a lot, I might grease it. But um, the problem with grease is it, it draws, it attracts so much dirt and dust. And, and that's what gives you that grime and eventually makes it difficult to work. Where um, I always oil my threads before ever using it for uh, any kind of application uh we did the top here you could see we cleaned it up nice it, it just a a lovely little project now if you want to paint this up it would make a great display piece but this is a working jack now back in good condition okay last up i got a fantastic jack to show you mechanical floor jack and uh uh, it came along with a fantastic story that I will tell next time because hopefully next time I'll be uh, doing a little cleanup on this jack. So let's get right and to it. And here it is. Look at this. First of all, can we just appreciate this beautiful, absolutely one owner. Well, I'm the second owner. Jack. Mechanical Jack. Check this out. Uh, just absolutely fantastic. Look at the the wood handle it had here and this is a heavy jack you know and obviously couldn't be shipped but just beautiful and it works you know it's just a phenomenal jack let me show you how it works the action on this thing it's just beautiful okay i'll raise it this way so you can see you pull the lever to engage and you could see Okay, now remember over here, you have another area here that, uh, let me show you, this is really interesting. Now you also had the swivel pad up here that would raise up and lock in. So again, we didn't have to, right, and to release it, you would pull the, well, this has a piece of wire, probably had a piece of chain or something that disappeared, and that's how you would release that. And to come down, you have to flip that switch again, that uh, cable switch here flip it this way and then lower it like this the weight will help push it down but you have to lower it one click at a time you can see like that that is absolutely incredible okay, let's take a look at these steel wheels here and you can see here the castings of this jack and and look at the back here and the the plate hasn't been abused and the gear train it's been lubricated a lot but that's the problem you know the, the grease attracts a lot of dirt and here's that lever I was telling you about that you know, lever that throws forward or back to disengage okay so in closing we got quite a bit done today I uh, appreciate you tuning in I hope you have a great weekend take care now bye-bye